let's get it going. Um, welcome, everybody. This is Carol Bersad at the University of Washington. Um, and this, I'd like to welcome you to the third module on training. And this is all about understanding courses and course offerings and really most of the major processes related to courses and course offerings. So that includes course registration and course assessment. Again, this is just to remind you, since it's been um, a few weeks since we met, since we last met, um, this is a four, five, six module. I'm trying to cut our module short here. Uh, it's, it's the third of six modules. Um, we had understanding the enrollment environment, just past enrollment, and then we had understanding the enrollment environment. So that was things like setting up academic years and terms, and setting up people and permissions, and um, managing the registration environment. So that's sort of all the background work that is necessary in order to do things like offering courses and getting students registered and assessing students, which is what we're going to talk about today. Then on December 14th, we'll have the fourth module um, before the holiday break, and that will be understanding program and program offerings, um, enrolling students in programs and assessing student progress in programs. And then we have a bit of a break, and so when we get back, rather than do a follow-up session that's solely focused on the fourth module, um, what we'll do is we'll, when we come back after the holiday break is we'll have the two-hour follow-up session will really be devoted to any questions regarding any materials covered in the first four modules. And then we have our fifth and sixth module, which will be um, understanding cross-cutting concepts, which includes academic record, which is a, a big topic, um, and holds and exemptions, how they're applied to students um, and released from students. And then our last module will be understanding academic planning. So as always, I would point you to the wiki page for the most current um, information on these modules. So today, uh, we really have basically three main topics. Um, we have course offering, and these all follow the same basic um, sequence of events, if you will. We have course offering, and first we'll talk about concepts and terminology, and, um, and Bob Jansen from the UW will do that for us for course offering. Christina will then uh, lead us through the wireframes that we have around course offerings, and Kathy will talk about the related services for course offerings. Uh, we'll have a similar flow for course registration. Um, Hugh Parker will present the concepts and terminology. Christina, again, will walk us through the services. And then, last but not least, we'll have um, a course assessment, and Mike uh, will lead us through concepts and terminology, and Christina and Kathy, again, wireframes and services. Then we'll have a little bit of wrap-up, but we'll just walk through the related um, the supporting materials, all the business artifacts for these areas, and um, talk about next steps. So our timekeeper today is Dan Simons. Um, as always, our logistics coordinator is Cheryl, and I'm going to be our critical observer. So any questions before we dive in? Um, I just want to just remind you of the objectives and that expectations around these trainings. Again, it feels like, you know, between 12 days and the American Thanksgiving holiday, it feels like it's been a long time since we've done one of these. So just a reminder that the objective, the overall um, objective for all the trainings is really to equip participants with a really solid understanding of the functional framework of the case enrollment module and the associated business artifacts as they currently exist. And this is really to equip participants to be able to go off and do their self-study and dive into the materials and, and have enough understanding of the concepts and terminology, et cetera, to be able to do that. And specifically for Module 3, uh, we're going to do a more in-depth understanding of the three functional areas that I talked about, course offering, course registration, and course assessment. And again, with the hope that you could walk away, dig into the requirements, look at the service contracts, look at wireframes, and understand sort of where we are today um, in terms of our Design. Okay, um, just a reminder of where course offering and, uh, and related course functionality fits into the broader enrollment module scheme. If you recall, we have an institution facing portion of the module and a student facing portion. And really at the center, sort of the heart of enrollment, when people tend to think of enrollment, they think about the ability to offer courses by the institution have students register in those courses, and then give students grades in those courses. And again, if we circle back out, then we layer on program. Um, most of you have seen this slide many times at this point, particularly if you want to follow um, So then the, ne 
next, you know, the next stepping out is is the program layer, and that's what we'll deal with in the next module. And then the background work of setting up users, managing info preferences, that's what we covered in, in the last module. So, and then at the center of all this, which is the cross-cutting concept that we'll deal with in module five, is the academic record holds and exemptions. So we just kind of group these together in our 10 functional areas, and what you see in red is what we're going to cover today. So course offering, course registration, and course assessment. And it's probably important to know how some of the other KS modules um, intersect with these functional areas. Uh, curriculum management, obviously, is where the approved courses live, and that dictates what in turn can be offered, and Bob will talk about that. And the scheduling is obviously a key component. How do you offer courses without sending them to a scheduler? And Kathy will touch on that in, this, um, in her service discussion. And then over on the course registration side, we intersect with um, KS accounts. And we'll talk a little bit about tuition and fees there. So, so that's just sort of the big picture of where we are. I'm now going to hand it over to Bob. And he will. Take over from here. And I will go on mute when I ask that everybody who's not speaking mute. All right, here we go. Okay, hopefully you've all had a chance to uh, read the first slide. Um, you know, our hope is that you go ahead and just take a big bite out of Kowali. It's it's really juicy. Um, and, and through these training sessions, um, the idea here is that you will avoid any blobs of jelly. So today we're going to be looking uh, initially here at course and, and course offering. And we really can't talk about course offerings without um, first talking about the clue. And some of this may be um, repetitive from things you've heard before, but we're going to, you know, just bear with me here. So in, construct, uh, in curriculum management, we have this concept of a clue or a canonical learning unit. And um, course is just one uh, type of clue, and it's the one we're kind of focused on this morning. So in business terms, a clue is a... Um, or the clue course, I should say, would be any approved course that would be part of uh, your catalog of courses. The clue course has uh, both formats and at, uh, activities, and we'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, the clues hold a number of uh, course attributes such as course titles and descriptions, um, governance information, uh, grade assessment, course outcomes, learning objectives. Um, and it's also uh, kind of a, a holder for uh, a lot of the rules, such as prerequisites. The GLUE course um, supports multiple formats and multiple activities. And the, a, a format, you can think of a format as uh, simply uh, different ways that courses might be offered. The activities are, um, again, in kind of business speak, they're things like the lecture, the lab, the, the discussion session, the practicum, the clinic, the clerkship. Um, and so in the, in the canonical course, the clue course, um, it ha we have the ability to, to sit, set up these uh, different groupings of, of ways courses are being offered. So each format contains activities, and um, the, the activities are really what define the manner in which the learning takes place. Um,
and um, and it kind of serves then as a, a blueprint for uh, creating the course offering. So the the course offering itself then inherits uh, information from the clue, so that um, and and uh, and other attributes as well. And it also has some attributes that are uh, unique to its, itself. The, the example here, we have an English 101 academic writing is the canonical uh, or the clue course. Um, and then we're showing an instance of that uh, clue course, uh, which is the offering. Um, what makes the offering also unique is the fact that um, it gets associated or connected to a specific term that it's going to be offered in. The course offering uh, can be is generally going to be set up based on how you define the formats at the canonical level. So in this instance, you can see we have uh, the, the clue course, is the format, first format is a lecture and a discussion. Uh, it also has a second format that is uh, also a lecture without a discussion, and, and that's because it, is, uh, it has this online um, component to it as well. So when we set up the course offerings, um, we again have two examples where we have the uh, lecture, and we actually have two lectures and four discussion sections um, set up for this English 101, and then we also have a single uh, lecture without any discussion section. The course offering itself um, contains uh, attributes that are uh, kind of independent, um, such as seat counts, uh, days, times, locations, and instructors. So the registration group is, is another concept that we have related to the course offering. And so we've got that same course offering uh, that we just saw on the previous slide. You can see it um, up on top. The registration groups are simply ways that we um, combine the, those uh, formatted groups together. Uh, and, and these are the things that students are actually going to register for. So, in the first example, you can see a registration group where you have uh, that first column has uh, the, the first lecture and one of each of the discussion groups. The second column has the second lecture and one of each of the discussion groups. Um, so the student then, when they register, they're going to um, choose one of these eight groups to register for. Um, registration groups can be uh, built in this manner or they can be singular, um, as is the case with the, the single online uh, version of this course. Another example of how you, uh, as an a individual institution, you can make these decisions as the, the flexibility is built into this to allow you to um, uh, separate those registration groups in, into each of their kind of smaller components. So in this particular instance, you can see that we still have the same two registration, uh, the same two lectures, but you choose one of those two lectures and then independently you have to choose one of the four discussion groups to uh, and then register for both of them as a, as a combination. In thinking about um, course offering, um, we have used uh, 
uh, user stories, and these are really probably more like epics to than they are um, user stories themselves. You can see um, these are the areas we're going to um, cover here in a, a couple seconds. Um, so as a central administrator or departmental administrator, I want to roll over a course offering from a previous term so that they can be modified for a new term. Um, the second being as a central administrator or departmental administrator, I want to create a course offering in a term by selecting from a list of approved canonical courses from the approved course inventory. So we're going to talk a little bit about the creation process itself. And um, rollover is uh, something you're probably familiar with. It's, it's essentially the process of copying a previous term. Um, typically, it's the same term from a previous year. Uh, it's a copy process where you, um, in a bulk uh, copy uh, all those courses over and and apply them to the the new term. Um, typically, this is going to be done by a, a central administrative uh, group, uh, but we have also um, approached it from the standpoint of the need of for departmentals uh, rollover to occur as well. And uh, departmental rollover is distinguished uh, from the central administrative rollover in the sense that uh, each department may roll over their courses at uh, slightly different times. Um, in both instances, there will be some filtering of, of data that gets rolled over. Uh, as a part of the central rollover, maybe it's, it's again, since it's a bulk copy process, uh, maybe there would only be things like um, building room instructor and uh, uh, room capacity that doesn't roll over, uh, whereas a, a departmental rollover, they may want to uh, filter that a little uh, more granularly uh, and for whatever reason possibly not include days or times or some other attribute of the course. We also have um, the ability then to uh, create courses from the catalog itself. This is going to be done in a, a one-off uh, or ad hoc kind of uh, process, but we also have the ability uh, or hope to have the ability here to create um, courses from the catalog in, in a bulk fashion. And, and by that, I mean you should be able to um, add uh, a lecture and 25 discussion sections all in one uh, step, all as part of one process. So uh, at this point, I am going to turn it over to Christina, who is going to uh, show you some wireframes uh, on, on how rollover might, might play out in, in uh, enrollment here. Before we go there, um, thanks, Bob. I, I just I want to recap a little bit. So really the, the point of the, the previous presentation was really to try to understand what is a canonical course and then how that plays out at the time of offering. So what's that relationship between the canonical version and the offering? And then understand that there are activities that are part of a course offering. And that's where the actual learning takes place and that's what actually gets scheduled. So we wanted to first understand what this thing is that we're calling a course offering before we start talking about the processes involved with course offerings, such as rollover, which is what we're going to look at now, which Bob just explained to you. And also, I just want to encourage us to continue to use the language. Um, it's, we don't have the ability to do any of this yet. <laughs> we recognize that we need the ability to do these things as we design and, um, and deliver this system, which we will all be a part of. So. Um, don't want to make it sound like we've actually got this all ready to go yet. These are, you know, more business concepts that we're hoping to deliver as we move into parallel development. Earl, so. are you going to take money now or? Pardon? Are you guys taking questions now or now? Uh, Any time, yeah. Go ahead. If you have a question. Can you hear me okay? I'm hearing you fine. Let me go on 
me while you ask your question. Okay. Um, in the slide that uh, Bob was showing, where it was showing the reg groups, it, you had outlined format one as showing the two lectures and the four discussions, but format one is actually just a lecture and a discussion, correct? That's correct. So what, what the format does is defines the combination of activities that a student has to participate in in order to get credit for that course, right? So the format is saying, you know, at the canonical level, what you're saying is the format consists of a lecture and a discussion. Now, when you actually go to when you actually go to schedule those activities, you may want to schedule multiple lectures that students can choose from and multiple discussions. So really what it does, the format really defines the template for the types of activities that then you offer at the time of offering. But your point is a good one. Students only sign up for one of each. Yeah, and I just want to point that out because on the canonical level, um, when you look at the offering, you offer one lecture and one session. Right, but, but when you go to offer it, you're saying, you know, when I go to offer it, I'm saying, what do I need to do to offer this course? Well, you may, just like when you schedule um, a course that only had one lecture, you may multi schedule multiple sections of that, right? You may schedule 50 lecture sections of English 101 or Math 101. So really, but what it does is, is the, the canonical says, what types of activities must I offer and what combination must students take? But so discussion, what, discussion one and discussion two, discussion three, and discussion four, those are all identical. Those are all discussions. And that's what gets driven by, by the canonical. And then the same thing for the lecture. Those are just different actual offerings of a lecture, and they should all be the same. They're just different sections. Does that make sense? Does that get your question? Yep. Okay, beautiful. All right, Christina. All right, so this first um, demonstration is just going to be of the rollover portion of what Bob was talking about. And these, this is linked up about that um, PowerPoint. So if anyone wants to take a look, you can. When you first get there, it's going to bring you to the screen that looks like this. And this is showing you in a quick overview from the application map of what, what areas that we're talking about here. There's also a screen flow that you can go through and see kind of what activities are happening before you get into the prototype. Then from the prototype, this view is, this, this is the central administrator or that, that group who, that are going to start the rollover for the next term. So they start the rollover and what they need to do, this is, this is a very pared down version just to illustrate what's happening, but what they're, they're going to do is select the source term and the term to populate. So they choose summer and of last year and, and want to populate summer of this year. And then there's this concept of the rollover settings. And that's what Bob was talking about, about including or excluding specific data elements or schools or faculty. There's something that the central does um, that has that, that's telling them what, what information to take. And you could this this prototype doesn't illustrate that, but Perhaps they wouldn't want to take certain pieces, as he was saying, that the, at the department level or for whatever reason, they might want to filter that a little bit more. Um, they could go in and, and edit or control what pieces of information to, to execute. And then the execute immediately would be, if unchecked, you can select the date in the future and have the rollover run. Then there's two options here, just preview or initiate rollover. Preview isn't shown, but it would look exactly like what happens when you initiate rollover, only it would be a preview. It wouldn't, it wouldn't actually take effect yet. It would allow the person to take a look and see if, make sure that what they're getting is what they want. Then when they initiate the rollover, this is at the central level again. So they've got all the departments. And it, this is just you know a sample, and obviously I didn't go over it all the data from all of these departments, all the departments, but they can see all of the departments and all of the courses that were rolled over, all of their summer 2010 courses, and all of the information that would have been rolled over. Some of the things that maybe wouldn't have been, maybe they didn't roll over the instructor or the location, so that information isn't going to be in these course offerings yet, it will need to be added. And at the central level, this, this person can drill down into and look at a specific department 
if they want to and see only what that one department is or see all, all of the entire um, school rollover courses. So that is the extent of rollover, talking about what he was, he was saying, rolling over from a previous term. So I'm, I'm going to show some of the other stuff about detailing some of the course offering and adding a course from the catalog or from an approved set of courses a little later. So right now I think I'm turning it back over to Bob to continue with the PowerPoint. Thank you. 